Linda, come forward. <laughs> We've had too many interesting submissions. <laughs> uh, thank you, Your Worship and councillors. Uh, I'm Dave Wilkinson. I'm the manager of Enabled Support, and you obviously know Glenda. Uh, she's our office manager. She keeps me under control. I can go off a bit. Well, I've got some extra um, information here for the councillors, if they would, if they would like to be distributed. Um, first and foremost, um, it's fairly obvious we need to thank the council for their continued support over, over the years um, as uh, Neighbourhood Support is a standalone organisation. A uh, bit of brief history lesson for those newer people around the, the, the council chambers. Neighbourhood Support was first started in 1979 as Neighbourhood Watch by the police and it was set up um, as a result of a rather um, severe crime against an old lady in, in Auckland. It remained a police um, function until 2000. During the time between it was set up and when it was uh, sort of put outside the police, they changed the name to Neighbourhood Support because uh, the neighbours were too busy watching each other, not supporting each other, so the name Support came about. In 2000, Neighbourhood Support was um, moved outside the police and it had to become a standalone organisation. Uh, in, in Canterbury, Canterbury Neighbourhood Support Incorporated was set up um, and um, Glenda was involved in part of that. Um, I'm just going to speak briefly about what our submission is, but before I do that I've uh, had an interesting um, seminar I spent uh, yesterday with Dr Rob Gordon from, um, who's been working with uh, bushfire people in Australia and, and our um, um, people here in Canterbury, and he said basically building the city is not just about buildings and infrastructures, it's also about people. That's where we're coming from. Yep. We're building stronger neighbourhoods, and it's all about neighbours helping neighbours. Canterbury neighbourhood support before September and after February's earthquake, we had something like 2,000 neighbourhood support groups, and that's dropped down to over about 1,200. We lost over 700 neighbourhood support groups in the red zone, so that's a big chunk of people oh. that have, um, unfortunately for us, have moved uh, um, north of the Wymac or out to Selwyn. But having said that, we're in a rebuild phase, a bit like the council. We're, we're having to look at uh, what we do do best, and uh, we're, we're in, in rebuild mode again. Um, some of our areas we're still working with are the Port Hills, because there's areas up there are still in a bit of a state of flux as houses are being rebuilt. Um, and repaired, uh, and uh, we're gradually working our way through getting those groups back online. And also in the new subdivision like Wigram Skies, we've got new groups as well, so the council chair would be interested in that. Um, one of the things we do as an organisation, we're involved in quite um, a number of things outside of just crime prevention. One of the things I'm involved with is the neighbourhood policing teams in both Phillipstown and um, Rickerton. And along with those two um, projects is the um, Safe Growth and Safer Communities um, projects as well. And that's um, borne fruit. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been, been uh, positive to see. I'm also involved with the Family Violence Preventive Collaborative so that we're getting messages out through our network and also through our magazines um, to those families that um, are being, being done hard, whether it's been caused by the earthquake or not. Um, I've been working closely with Sarah um, over the, the last four years. Community groups, uh, I'm involved with Safer Christchurch, the graffiti office, um, and um, community patrols as well. We, we're looking at um, this from a point of view that um, one of those uh, documents we provided was the review of the Civil Defence Emergency Management response to the 22nd Feb earthquake, which is right at the back. And one of the things that came out from those, those learned gentlemen was that um, they, they said that more moment. emphasis should be placed on neighbourhood support uh, in the event of a disaster. And as a result of February's earthquake, I worked in the Emergency Operations Centre for uh, seven weeks, in which case, in which time I was matching people's skills and resources with those people that had needs. 
That was prior to our new web-based information system, which is up and running now. We can do that at a drop of a hat. And some of the uh, councils around this table would have seen that web website uh, in action, um, which shows you how powerful it can be. Uh, I'm, I've got nothing more to say. I'd like to pass over to Glenda, because Glenda's going to talk on behalf of Andrea, our junior neighbour support coordinator. Um, yeah, it's my privilege to talk about junior neighbourhood support, but I'd like to thank you for your time tonight. Um, the main focus of our submission is the importance of the community grants and, and what that brings to the community. And really what we're trying to say to you is that without the community grant, we couldn't operate and we couldn't do the things we do, which is help building neighbourhoods and bringing, uh, putting the glue in the community. But while we're doing that for the community, we operate a junior neighbourhood support um, programme in schools. Andrea, our um, coordinator, is, is very vibrant and just the loveliest person. She's uh, an ex-teacher. She's working in 12 schools across the city, and that covers 3, 000, about 3,000 children. And one of the reasons it came about was, um, for those of you who've had children that perhaps went through school when mine did, the children that got the attention were the naughty children. They got the treats when they were good. Well, the aim of the programme is to reward the children who have been good citizens. And it's just a little treat. Um, they're nominated by their teachers, the community, other students, just whoever. Andrea verifies that the information's correct. And then they're rewarded in front of the whole school assembly probably twice a term, she's in both school and all the schools. Um, and the children just get a little goodie bag with stuff mainly from the $2 shop in it and a certificate. And it's just encouraging them to be good citizens. And these are the children who are going to be your future ratepayers and who are going to be the children who will help the city stick together. So it's a really important programme. And we just want to say, without your support and I guess the support of other community groups, those sorts of... Um, programs couldn't happen and they're just so vital to the city that the community is well connected. So thank you. Thank you very much and uh, I was really grateful to see you um, raise the question of the independent review into the civil, de civil defence response because um, I've been of the view for a very long time that we need to uh, find out how to coordinate and integrate um, the civil defence volunteer network that we have. Um, and the neighbourhood support, which um, is really a city-wide resource in times of emergency. But um, at the rest of the time, it's not focused on um, an emergency response. It's focused on um, you know, developing networks of support within communities. And that, that to me, is just an ideal mix. Um, and I think we could do really, really well by taking that recommendation and making it happen. Uh, Phil then, Jimmy. Look, I was just going to ask you, I just wondered how that, the whole um, how the civil defence part of being linked with council, Dave, and, and they would support, how that might also be linked to um, local flood defence planning. There are some community groups who have got that underway. I think Aranui is a very good case in point. I was wondering, is there already some linkages or is there perhaps some potential for you linking with that part of, of our, our sort of civil defence? No, we, we've already had... Um we had a training session with Mount Pleasant um, emergency response team up there. That's, that's run from the community. Yep. Uh, Summerfield Residents Association uh, and a couple of others. The next one I'm going to be dealing with is the North Shore Residents Association. So we're trying to build those things at, at, at grassroots level. And um, it might be good too to have links with the community boards around that too. And yes, the that yes, yes. Too. Think of that. Yeah, Jimmy. One question, because I reviewed the other report regarding to the uh, number of street groups and uh, also the kind of the, the different world, I am concerned, uh, for instance, like Fendleton by Mary, they have only the 58,000 people, but at the moment they have the neighbor support group of 210. But Rickton Wigwe, uh, we have 68. The thousand people, only 148. And you particularly mentioned regarding to the new subdivision area, you try to set up, you know, the new the kind of neighborhood support, the group. But I'm concerned what 
how many numbers the street group on Wigan Sky, Dela Mine, the Eden Field, this is a new subdivision area. This is my particular concern. Very few. Um, and I mean, point of the, I think the point of the fact is too, there's one of me to, to, to do the field work. So unless we get um, someone prepared to put their hand up in a street to start the ball rolling, I don't have the time to go door knocking. And when you door knock to set up a group, it doesn't work anyway. You've got to have that natural leader in the street exactly. to say, yeah, pick me. Um, so, we, so I don't know whether it's something we can do with, with your community board is, um, is going out into those areas and talking to people. Yep. yep. A, a very good suggestion. Look, thank you very much. That was um, an excellent submission and um, I think that's given us some food for thought as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Neighbourhood Trust for Janea Larson.